everyone and thank you for joining us. This is a new uh, video uh, from the Get uh, to Think Tank at FIDE, Road to Oxford. We are joined here with the, by the leaders of the working group number two, Daniela Moore and Eric Bormans. Eric is working as, uh, he is the head of ESG at Big Ted Asset Management and Daniela is an investment analyst at, at the ACP Cuprum. So I'm starting, Daniela, with you. Uh, this working group is in charge of uh, addressing the main challenges at the uh, time of, uh, of uh, addressing the ESG uh, ratings and key metrics. I believe this is really, really uh, the, the, <laughs> the key point of the, of the matters uh, when, when uh, trying to, uh, well, to find solutions to the, to the ESG world inside the financial markets and, and the investment markets. So what you have been doing uh, in this working group, in this working paper, is really interesting and important. So could you guide us through what have been the main uh, subjects or, or issues that, that you have been working on? Yes, sure. Thank you, Anna. Um, well, this group is a very diverse group. We have uh, professionals of different uh, geographies like Europe, Latam, um, and also from different scopes or perspectives um, like asset owners and asset managers. And this, um, this group allowed us to, to understand that um, this metrics, ESG metrics and ESG ratings is an, an issue that is um, not just for a, a small group, instead a, a large group, and we wanted to, to cover this. So like you said, um, there are two key um, themes, the um, ESD metrics and ESD ratings, and there are many uh, issues uh, around them. So maybe I'll let Eric the, the next <laughs> insight. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Daniela. Eric, uh, really, this is this is uh, uh, an alphabet soup of things. Uh, <laughs> the DSG metrics and ratings that not not everyone is is capable to understand. Not even the most experienced uh, uh, people in in the industry. Not, not to talk about the, the final clients, no, but this is another working group. So for you, in this uh, in this paper, what have been the, the more most important or or more challenging uh, aspects uh, when when avoid when 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 addressing uh, all these issues. <laughs> Yes, Anna, thank you. I think on ESG ratings, um, obviously, we have seen in the last five years um, an increased use of those high level ESG ratings being uh, implemented um, or being applied to companies or countries, uh, so both uh, corporate issuers and sovereign issuers. The, uh, um, we don't pretend to conduct uh, another analysis or another deep dive of the methodologies used by the different providers such as Sustainalytics, MSCI, ISS, or others, but the one of the key points that we spent time discussing within the working group is um, to highlight the importance of being clear about the use case of uh, those uh, of those ratings. Is it to select individual? issuers and construct and uh, an ESG portfolio? Is it to um, replicate an ESG index whose construction is um, usually defined by um, the ratings provided by a, a, a data provider who sometimes are also index providers? Is it to compare portfolios uh, against one another, since ratings can be ap are applied at issue level, but then obviously can be aggregated at portfolio level. Is it to select uh, funds or portfolios, or is it to report uh, results to to end clients? So being clear about the the end use uh, or the use cases is is critical for asset owners, but also for asset managers. Another uh, point that we discussed in the working group is uh, the fact that today there is a, um, um, a broad divergence uh, between ESG ratings, and, and that is in stark contrast with the situation that there exists today on, for example, credit ratings that are highly correlated, 
because the underlying data is very standardized and the methodologies are broadly similar. So no surprise, the correlations between credit ratings is very high, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Uh, and by contrast, ESG ratings have much lower correlations, say 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Um, and that uh, is uh, um, leads to two important conclusions. Number one, um, users need to be uh, clear about the underlying methodologies that lead to one rating versus another rating and be comfortable uh, before selecting a, a, a data provider. Uh, they need to be comfortable about the underlying methodologies uh, used by those providers. And, um, and people also rightly pointed to the fact that uh, ESG ratings are probably closer to buy and sell recommendations uh, from sell side analysts for which everyone is used and, and is actually interested in the fact that they cover, that they are very diverse and, and non-correlated. If all the brokers were buy on the name or sell on the name, I mean, imagine what sort of movements we would have out there uh, in, in the bond market or, or in the stock market. Whereas here, actually, we have the luxury of having a diversity of viewpoints, and that's actually quite healthy. Uh, but it, it, it requires really users to be clear about what are the methodologies, which ones are they more comfortable with, and, and which ones is in line with their own philosophies, but also that is uh, which ones are uh, more suitable for the end users that I was referring to in, in the first place. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, a snapshot of the uh, the points uh, that, okay. that we've debated within the working group yeah. on sure, the SG sure. ratings. Yes, I think I think this is a, a, a really one of the most important issues that we are addressing in this get to in the road to Oxford uh, work that we are all doing. And, and I agree with Daniela that diversity of this group is, is one of the of the components of this group is, is one of the most interesting things because asset owners, asset managers from different regions, which is something that is very valuable on, on what Eric what you were you were saying, or the, the real use, how helpful is to have these ESG ratings and, and and metrics to invest in, in a better informed way, no, and, and link that to performance or expected performance. So I want to thank you as co-leaders of, of the group, both of you. And uh, well, just uh, let's meet again in Oxford and invite everyone to attend the sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.